Hello everyone, Benji Bono here for another foray into the Summa Theologica. Today we are talking about question 45, our second question in the Treatise on Creation. It's on 8 Article 1, so you know what that means. We're going to break it up into two parts. This video is going to cover Articles 1 through 4, and then in a few days I'll get back to you with Articles 5 through 8. So question 45, the mode of emanation of things from the first principle. That's a mouthful. Essentially all we're really covering here is how are things created by God, especially. I mean, first we're going to, you know, as you can see from the article titles, we don't even take that as a given. But anyway, so first in article one, we'll define our terms. Whether to create is to make something from nothing. Well, let's see. Augustine says that to make concern something that did not exist, but to create is to bring something forth from what already exists. Action is noblest when it is from good to good and being to being. Creation is the most noble action. Therefore, it is from being to being. And number three, the preposition from imports relation to a material cause and nothing cannot be a material cause of anything. But the gloss, and I'm not quite sure what he means by that. It must be some kind of commentary, presumably authoritative, uh, at least from Aquinas' perspective, probably something from the Church Fathers or, um, yeah, maybe, I don't know quite what he means by the gloss on Genesis 1-1. But anyway, the gloss on Genesis 1-1 and whatever Aquinas is referring to says that to create is to make something from nothing. So that's how he's going to use the term. All right. In answering this question, we need to consider not only particular beings, but the whole of creation. Because God is the first being, and no other being is from him, all creation emanates from him. Thus, all creation goes from a state of not being, or nothing, to being. Uh, you'll notice in a couple of these that the argument, at least these first couple, the argument is really just restating things we've already seen before. Uh, and he's bringing them up more to kind of Put that out there again in a new context and then answer some of the objections around these topics, okay? So nothing too revolutionary here. Uh, objection one replied to, pretty easy one. Augustine is just using the term creation or create in a different way. Pretty simple. Number two, changes receive dignity not based on their source but from their destination. So in other words, when we talk about action as noblest when it's from good to good, what Aquinas is saying is that, well, the most important thing, though, is the second part, what it's going to, not what it's coming from, okay? Therefore, a more noble being may come from a less noble source, even from nothing. And then, in the case of creation from nothing, the preposition from signifies only order. It doesn't signify matter. All right, so... To find our term, creation, and the way Aquinas is going to use it, means creation ex nihilo, a creation from nothing. But can God create anything? Well, you'd think so, but let's find out. The ancient philosophers considered an axiom, or first principle, that nothing is made from nothing. God's power does not violate first principles. All that means, again, just we've talked about that before, uh, God couldn't make... I'm trying to think of an example. He couldn't. Uh, he couldn't make my shirt uh, red while it's still blue. You know that type of thing. He could make it red, but then it would be red. You know, it's just logical contradictions. It's uh, you know, uh, we've talked about the C.S. Lewis quote that nonsense is nonsense, even when we're talking about God. Um, same type of thing here. Therefore, God cannot make anything from nothing. Okay, to be made is to be changed. Change cannot occur in nothing. Number three, to be made must be proceeding by a state of becoming. Becoming cannot be sustained by nothing. Therefore, creation from nothing is... I think I might meant to say preceded here. That would make more sense. So to be made must be preceded by a state of becoming. Becoming cannot be sustained in nothing. Therefore, creation from nothing is impossible. So it's positing that there's an intermediate state between nothingness and creation of becoming. And then infinite distance cannot be crossed. There is infinite distance between nothing and something. Once again, we go back to Genesis 1.1. Well, God created the heavens and the earth. We've already defined what create means. Therefore, I guess God can create. 
Again, we're just going to restate stuff here, nothing too crazy. Question 44 establishes that it is necessary that everything be created by God. All things emanate from God, the universal cause of all being. Therefore, God brings all things into being by nothing, or from nothing. Uh, nothing there we haven't seen before. Okay? But let's get to our objections. The ancient philosophers considered only particular effects and particular causes. We are considering the emanation of creation as a whole. So when the ancient philosophers said nothing is made from nothing, they're thinking within the closed system of the natural world. We're thinking of how the natural world itself proceeds from God, which is a very different question. Number two, creation is not change except in the way that we understand it. That's what he means by our mode of understanding. Change requires a previously existing subject. Creation does not. So the whole premise then of uh, objection two is wrong. Number three, in things made without movement to become and to be are simultaneous. There's no logic, there's no progression from one to the other. Therefore, creation is something that's without movement. God does not move. It's something from nothing. Therefore, there is no state of becoming prior to being. Okay, and then number four, this objection assumes a change between two forms, which has already been shown is not what creation is, because we saw that in number two. Uh, so... That whole infinite distance thing does not apply. Whether creation is anything in the creature. Okay. Creation is passively in the creature as it is actively in the creator. Creation is nothing in God or there would be something temporal in him. Interesting objection. Therefore, it must also be nothing in the creature. If creation were the medium between creature and creator, it would suppose another creation creating that medium and so on to infinity. Therefore, creation is nothing in the creature. I didn't fully quite get this one. I think what he's getting at is, and I could be wrong, uh, is saying that um, if we look at, there's, there's infinite distance, well, there can't be a perfect medium between create, creator and creature because there's infinite distance between God and the creature. So it seems like it would need yet another act of creation to account for that first one, first medium, and so on to infinity. I didn't fully quite grasp what he was getting at there, though. And number three, if creation is in the creature, it is as an accident. And this is impossible since it would require the accident to precede the subject. But just as generation is something in a creature, so is creation. He goes into a little bit more detail on that. You, know, you can check it out in his argument from authority if you want. All right, the argument. Creation places something in the creature by relation only. That's a key concept in his argument here. This is the case because creation is without movement. When movement is removed, only relation remains. Still, this relation remains between the creature as a being and the creature creator as the principle of being, meaning... The creature as a being, not the relation as a being, just to, to make that a little bit more clear. Um, so there's a relation between Ben Di Bono as a being and God as the principle of being. And that relationship does exist between creator and creature. Okay, objections answered. The active side of creation is in the divine action. So that's how we get around... Um, we're not saying it's anything in God, but it is something in his action, which you can go back and you know reread what we saw uh, in the Treatise on the One God and the Treatise on the Triune God about the uh, divine actions, especially Treatise on the, uh, the One God, I think is where we would have most of that material to understand how all that works. But say, no, there is something real regarding creation within the divine action. And that's how there can be something in the creature. All right, number two, creation is signified as a medium between creator and creature. This does not require further relation, further, further creation since relations are not referred to by other relations. Again, didn't fully quite get that one. But hey, if we only have one objection in uh, the whole video where we, we are, or at least I'm kind of at a loss, we're doing a lot better than we were in the Treatise on the Triune God. All right, number three, creation is the subject of creation when taken as a real relation. I think I meant creatures, uh, because that wouldn't make very much sense. Cre a creature, we'll say, is the subject of creation when taken as a real relation. So it's essentially just saying that because of the whole relation thing, it's 
within that that uh, relation is within the creature subject not its accidents i think all right finally for tonight whether to be created belongs to composite and subsisting things again don't get too confused by the terminology all he's really getting at is okay is it things that are created or is it things like you know things like you know, you and me that are created, or is it more abstract things like forms, accident, all of that? This is, for those of you keeping score at home, yet another case where we're kind of dealing with that difference between Platonism and Aristotelianism, okay? The work De Causis says the first of creatures is being. The being of a created thing is not subsisting, so the thing's created existence is not a subsisting composite thing. Created things are from nothing. Composite things are not from nothing. Therefore, composite things are not created. And math is the second. I don't know why I wrote math there. Maybe I was thinking of my sci-fi Christian. Oh, I meant to write matter. Well, maybe I had my sci-fi Christian co-host on my mind. Hi, Matt, if you're watching. Uh, but what I meant to say there was not Matt, but matter is the second emanation from the first and is therefore the thing created and matter is not composite so it's talking about you know primal matter there matter without form well once again we go back to genesis 1 1 well god created what the heavens and the earth well those are subsisting composite things so take that <clears throat> all right non-subsisting non-composite things such as forms and accidents are not made first as they do not exist apart from things and that boys and girls is aristotelian realism being asserted over platonic realism the platonic idea of forms right there is being ruled out for the forms are not things with an independent existence in some ideal world they are things that ex do not exist apart from the things that take their form we've talked about that before so i won't get into all of that again therefore they are and he has this term concreated or created with alongside rather than created things thus it is subsisting composite things not the forms and accidents and all that that are the created things all right finally in that statement from De causes being is not the subject of creation but refers to the concept of creation then he gives this example i'm going to read it then i'll explain it this is similar to how we might say that the first thing we see is color although it is not color itself that we see but the thing that is colored okay so what he's saying here let's go back to this first part that in the in this quote from De causes being that says being is the the first of creatures is being he's saying that well what that means isn't that being itself is the thing created but it's talking about the concept of how uh creation works i don't know really anything about this work so i can't tell you if aquinas is taking that in context or if he's reappropriating a quote from that uh but in any event he's saying that no a a creature's existence its being is not actually the thing created it's simply the concept or order of it's it's what that creature needs in order to be a created thing and he says this is similar to how and i'll rephrase this here how if you saw me coming towards you like way off in the distance okay maybe the first thing you see you know i'm i'm way you know around out in the desert or something and so i'm, I'm five miles away and you get your first glimpse of me uh and all you see is this kind of blue blob because i'm wearing this shirt so you see blue first well he's saying what you see then isn't actually the color blue you're actually seeing my shirt me or you know whatever so you might see color and say i see something blue coming towards me but you're not seeing blue itself as like a subsisting thing you're not seeing the whole essence of blueness walking towards you or indeed even the shade of blueness uh you're you what you are seeing is a thing my shirt that has blue that has a, an accident of blue and so that's the difference there i know it's a little confusing hopefully that 
kind of, and he's saying that 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 the relationship between my shirt and the color blue is the same relationship or a similar relationship between a creature and that creature's being. I know a little confusing, but what are you gonna do? All right, number two, creation is not the building of composite things, but the bringing into existence of a composite being along with all its principles simultaneously. Okay, so that argue that objection number two is referring to composite things, you know, being composited, you might say. All right, and then number three, matter does not exist alone, but exists within created beings. We've seen that before in our discussions of primal matter. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for tonight then. So next time we'll look at these last four uh, articles of question 45. Hopefully this has been a little easier for everyone than uh, the Treaties on the Triune God is. I'm certainly finding it a little bit of a welcome step back from those uh, that pretty intense reading that we were doing before. But anyway... Uh, I will be back in a few days with Articles 5 through 8. Until then, I'm Ben Nubono, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.